afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I wanted to do a spin-off of one that I've done before where I did Dress Like a Millionaire. Today's gonna be basically along the same lines, but it's gonna be more about tips and tricks to looking more rich or on the expensive side without having to spend a lot of money, which I have watched a lot of videos about in my day, let me tell you. There's one from Nikki Sky that I would really recommend. I think it's called 22 Broke Girl Secrets to Looking Like a Rich Girl. And like I said in my last one, it's not the end all be all if we look rich versus looking not rich. Like that's not really what life's about. But if you are interested in fashion, then these are just some ways that you might be able to elevate an outfit that you haven't thought of yet. I came up with 15 new ways that I didn't mention in my last video. So you're getting some fresh ideas that I really think can be useful when this lockdown is over. We're able to go back into the world and you just wanna look a little bit more expensive or put together. So let's get right into it with 15 ways to look a little bit more expensive on a budget. Number one is to check every label before you buy an article of clothing. I think clothing is one of the first things that you notice about a person. What they're wearing can really capture your attention and in order to feel your best, look at the composition of every tag for every item that you might be looking to buy and see what it's made of. I would suggest buying items that are made of natural products. So if you're gonna go for leather, I prefer genuine over faux. Obviously that one's up to you, of course. Same goes with fur, but as far as things more for the summertime, try to stick more towards linen and cotton and you will see such a difference in how it feels. It's gonna breathe so much better than if you were to wear things with a lot of rayon or polyester in them. It's just gonna make you feel so much better and the items of clothing themselves are gonna look so much more expensive and bonus, they're gonna last you so much longer too. For this one, if you're going to shop fast fashion, check out the premium collections. Places like Zara and H&M obviously have great prices and that's part of the reason why they've done so well for themselves, but I think that looking at the premium line, you are able to get incredible quality pieces at such a reduced price when you compare the same composition tag from a Zara piece of clothing to that of a designer piece of clothing. When you're comparing 100% cotton to 100% cotton or the same for linen and linen from high street versus designer, it's the same linen. So I would just really recommend looking at the premium collections of fast fashion or high street designers, designers, and you'll be really shocked what you can find in terms of quality. The next tip that I have for you is to mix overly masculine with overly feminine. A trend that I think captures this really well is the really chunky like hiker combat boot trend with white summer dresses because the juxtaposition of the masculine with the feminine is something that creates such a great look that is really eye-catching and it looks beautiful on everybody that I've seen wear it. As far as getting inspiration for this look, I really just recommend first shopping your closet because I'm sure you'll be shocked to see what you can pair that's really masculine and feminine together. It doesn't have to be boots and a dress. It could even just be something as simple as like an oversized sweater belted at the waist to give it a really feminine silhouette but with an oversized masculine sweater. It it could be that, it really could be anything. So I would suggest having some fun with this one because you can really play with it by shopping your wardrobe. Similar to the last one, something that I think you should do to find inspiration in trying out new outfits is to replicate. I'm not talking about being an outfit repeater, but I'm just talking about looking at Pinterest and Instagram, saving outfits that you love, and then trying to replicate them yourself. Kelsey Simone has done this on her channel before where she'll literally pick out looks on Pinterest and then copy them with whatever items she has in her closet. So it doesn't need to be perfect item for item. It can just be in inspired by what you see. And the way that this makes you look more quote unquote rich is that a lot of the times we use items in our closet one way. If there's this top, for example, this is actually the first time I'm wearing this top, but if I started wearing this in one way, then the next time I wear it, I'm just gonna think of it in that same outfit combination without trying out different things and something that might actually enhance the look of a certain item to make it look its best 
but if you get stuck in a rut by only wearing things with the same pair of pants and shoes, then you're missing out on all of the options that that article of clothing might give you the opportunity to have. So I would recommend looking on Pinterest and copying looks from there that you think look rich or more luxe than you might otherwise wear on a day to day. This next tip is all about contrast. I suggest going as high contrast as possible with black and white looks. If you look at Chanel, for example, black and white is basically in the DNA of the fashion house. You can predict in any collection that they release that there are gonna be multiple looks that are only made of black and white articles of clothing. And I think that it speaks volumes. Black and white is never gonna go out of style. It's always gonna look amazing. So of course, you can look to fashion houses to see different ways that you can and pair black and white together, but I think just the combination of those two shades will make you well on your way to looking more luxe. Typically, just choosing a neutral based outfit I find is going to elevate a look more than wearing a bunch of colors together. I'm personally not one for a lot of color. We can see that in my closet. If I were to show you a pen up and down, side to side, you would probably see two articles of clothing with color, it's really not a lot. It's typically just black, white, and some tan that I stick to, but you can really never go wrong with black and white, and that's the point that I want to drive home with this tip. The next one is super simple, it's a red lip. There have been so many different times that this tip has been recommended, and it's because it's true. As soon as you put on a bold red lip, you automatically look more powerful and in command, and just more elevated than a nude lip, for example. Nude is basically what I go for on the daily, but whenever I do switch it up and wear red, it not only gives my outfit a whole different vibe, it just gives my confidence a whole boost. So I suggest going for a red lip when you want your look to just be more rich. This one is gonna be controversial because some people think that they are inherently hat people or inherently not hat people. But I think that as long as you have the confidence to wear one, just wear it, like just do it. When you're thinking that it's gonna be a little bit too extra with whatever outfit that you're wearing, trust me, I've done the same thing where I put on a hat and think it just looks a little too overbearing or a little bit too overdone. Just try it, do it for a day and see if by the end of the day you're more confident wearing the hat than in the morning and I think that you will be. Moving along with another accessories based tip is to wear brooches. Now. There are a lot of different designer brooches. I think the Chanel one is probably the most popular, but seeing a CC anywhere, it doesn't just have to be on a handbag as the actual logo or like the turn lock closure of the bag. But if you have a Chanel brooch, you could wear that on a hat or on a sweater or on the outside of a jacket or a blazer. And it's going to elevate that look so much because a CC is just something that stands out that I think honestly, everybody at this point recognizes. Chanel is a pretty known brand. If you did want to go that route, then obviously they've got a lot of brooches to offer and you can definitely shop pre-loved for them. But different fashion houses like YSL also do them and they're a little bit less common, which might actually make it a little bit more unique and it'll definitely dress up your outfit to make it look more expensive because you are adding a little bit of an expense to it, but it'll transform a regular like high street blazer or any sort of outerwear you're wearing it on into something that looks like it was bought at a designer boutique. As I mentioned in the last tip, to buy pre-loved is totally worth it. I suggest buying pre-loved before buying retail because you never know what you're gonna find. So there's sort of like a thrill of the hunt when you're looking at different either designer retail shops or consignment stores because you never know what they're gonna have and it could be the item that you've been missing from your closet or the cherry on top of the outfit that you're wearing that adds just something so unique because chances are if it's coming from a designer consignment shop, you're not going to be seeing it on everybody else. And I just often think that looking unique looks expensive because you're getting attention because it's different. Hmm. And I just think that looking unique often is the best way to look expensive. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I just went and had a snack and came back. So. Let's get back into it. My next tip is to find your signature style. So I think at this point I found mine. However, it is interesting how season after season, something just tweaks a little bit. I feel like it's very hard not to be influenced by trends. 
and I'm influenced by them all the time. But the Parisian, like French, a lot of lace, the vintage look right now is what I'm all into. And I'm really glad that I feel like I already have the base for that sort of look, but there are still some pieces that I would love to get for this season. So my tip for this one is to find your signature look and stick to it. I'm not at all opposed to trying out different trends and looking at different fashion inspiration and then experimenting with it to see what works for you. But I would just suggest not jumping on a different type of look when the trends change. I touched on this one before and it's to buy pre-loved or vintage because one of the things that I think looks most expensive is one that already looks unique. I already said that before, but looking at vintage or pre-loved will really just breathe new life into your wardrobe coming from past looks which I think is just great plus like reduce reuse recycle saving the planet all of that is very luxurious and rich and on trend this next one is actually one that I need to remind myself of quite often and it's not to get caught up in the label so if you like something and especially if it's not just unlabeled but if it's also good quality go for it because to me actually one of the most tacky and like least expensive looks out there is when you're wearing designer from head to toe not that I don't think the Chanel runway look head to toe is in beautiful trust me I think that it is but at the same time especially if you're mixing and matching designer houses or fashion houses wearing one logo and then another one and then another one all combined in the same outfit and in the same look to me looks so tacky and does not look expensive at all it just looks like you don't have a signature style so go for the no logo look over the logo look <laughs> This next one is a hair trend and it's to do the middle part, slick back, low ponytail. You cannot go wrong with it. It looks good on absolutely everybody. If you haven't tried it yet and you think it's something that just won't look good on you for whatever reason, whether it's your hairline or head shape or the size of your forehead, just do it and be so confident rocking it because trust me, it's gonna look amazing. It's a look that I go for all the time, and especially if I'm on day two or three hair, it's a look that honestly looks amazing because everything is slicked back, and even if you add more gel or whatever it is on top, it actually just exaggerates to me the fashion of it because it looks so intentional and it just looks like more of a runway hairstyle because we've seen it on the runways time and time again, again, when there's a lot of gel or product in the hair, and then it's just left flowing down your back. I think it's stunning. I really suggest that you try it. Okay, moving on, we've got high-waisted everything. To me, it elevates a look so much to wear things high-waisted because low-rise is just, it's just not my cup of tea. And maybe it will be a few years from now when, God forbid, that trend is back in. Who knows, because trends change with the tide and most likely it'll be back in our faces all over social media within the next few years. But as for now, I'm sticking with high-waisted everything. I think that the paper bag waist trend still isn't going anywhere. I think it's gonna be really big for this season. And also the more masculine menswear trousers worn really high and then cinched tight at the waist with like the box pleats at the front and just really oversized on the leg is something that I think is beautiful and again adds that masculine and feminine edge together which I think looks great on everybody. You can dress it up or down and you can add more feminine flair so if you wanted to add something like a pearl embellished handbag to really elevate the femininity of it it's something that I think you could really get away with and it's gonna look amazing. This one is super quick and it's not to buy costume jewelry that is going to turn your fingers green because that's just not a cute look. If you can, stick to gold plated. Typically, it's not that much more expensive than regular costume jewelry anyway. And I'll have some of my favorites linked down below for some local Toronto boutiques that are really worth supporting. You can buy gold plated jewelry, whether it's pre-loved or brand new, for under $100 for basically any size of piece, whether it's a bracelet, ring, necklace, I guarantee you can find some Etsy shops as well. There are a lot of them that do gold filled jewelry or gold plated, and it just really elevates a look when your fingers are the exact same color at the end of the night than they were at the beginning of the evening. <laughs> this one is not to buy designer sunglasses, and anybody that knows me or my 
fashion history knows that I started out absolutely loving designer sunglasses. I have a Dolce & Gabbana pair, a Versace pair, a Burberry pair, and the list goes on. But I don't think that it was necessarily worth the hundreds and hundreds of dollars that I spent on those because at the end of the day, if you look again at the composition of what you're buying, typically sunglasses are made out of acetate, which is plastic designer plastic versus regular plastic just save your money and don't bother with the label because as much as a written Dior on the side of a sunglass might make you feel more luxe I really don't think at the end of the day that that's gonna be the make or break for an overall look you can find a lot of dupes of designer sunglasses so you're getting the same shape and effect without having to spend the money and really the look is what it's all about so this pair that I recently got is a dupe for the old Celine frames that were huge and the price that they're reselling at is significantly more than they were retail when they were released. This is actually a Nikki Sky influence. She wore these and she said she gets compliments all the time on them. I personally love them. I also love how dark the lenses are tinted. It actually helps block out the sun because some of them are really just more for an aesthetic than actual functionality but these I think are awesome and if it's not these exact ones that you're into just go for the unbranded version of designer sunglasses and you'll get the look for so much less I guarantee it okay last but not least this is just like an overall suggestion it's to be confident in whatever you're wearing if something doesn't make you feel amazing then it's not worth your time and it's not worth your money so invest in what you can and don't worry about the rest but feeling confident in whatever you're wearing is automatically gonna bring out all of the good in the clothing pieces in your outfit if you carry them well so I think more than anything that I've mentioned so far, feeling good and being confident in what you're wearing is going to help you look so much more rich than any of these other suggestions could. So that's it for me today. I will see you all very soon in my next one. Please do give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'm gonna have another video linked after this one. If you want more of me, please do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell, and I'll see you all very soon in my next one. Bye guys.